Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in this video I wanted to go over everything you need to know for patch 9.1 as a Death Knight player. I haven't put out too much content um, on this topic, so this video should be a nice summary of everything you need to know from like, you know, which spec is looking better, what trinkets look good, um, are soulbinds changing, conduits changing, what's going on with legendaries, um, so I'll try to cover everything. First off, I wanted to talk a little bit about what's looking better, Frost or Unholy. Early on in the patch, I suggest playing Unholy if you're going to do Mythic Progression, um, even Heroic, just because there's not going to be that much changing going from Castle Nathria to uh, Sanctum in terms of tuning. They haven't changed any of our abilities. The only thing they changed was the AMZ nerf that I already talked about, uh, but that doesn't impact our DPS. So Unholy is still going to do slightly better early on. However, some sims are placing Frost a little bit ahead once you get everything. So all the best weapons, best trinkets, you know, best domination sockets, everything. Once you have everything, Frost might become better. But it's not worth playing Frost early on um, just because it's going to be better later. So you can still just focus on Unholy. There are a few early bosses where Frost does particularly well. Um, bosses like the nine for example frost is absolutely perfect for it because there are phases where all three bosses are active at the same time um so you get a ton of value out of breath of syndragosa but then the later on you go in the raid the more important single target becomes and like slight burst aoe um and unholy just kind of outshines it there um especially when a lot of your gear is still closer to cn gear than it is towards um bis gear that you have at the end of sanctum so that covers the specs. Um, for Soulbinds, it is changing a little bit. For Unholy, we are moving away from Ameni and we are going to be playing Bonesmith Hymir because Bonesmith will allow you to now play two potency conduits, uh, which was kind of the downfall of Bonesmith before. Basically, in Castle Nathria, you only got one potency, um, so that meant that you were missing out on Convocation, but now that with um, going all the way to the last row on Bonesmith, you actually get two potency conduits. You get to play um, Eternal Hunger and Convocation, and that is extremely powerful, um, especially because the last trait of Bonesmith is also pretty decent. It's a little bit of an execute bonus. So overall, Bonesmith is looking like the go-to pick if you're playing on Holy. However, on the other hand, if you're playing Frost, um, you will most likely still be playing a many um so that hasn't really changed and same with covenants the covenants haven't changed going from last patch to 9.1 you still want to play necro lord uh, for raiding or if you're playing frost there are a few other options you can play uh, venthyr or kyrian they're situationally better um for certain fights but generally i think most people are just going to play necro lord and then for mythic plus most people are still probably going to stick with venthyr on holy uh, playing the Nagia Conduit um, for pushing high keys. So that's pretty much what you want to be playing in terms of Conduits. Now, going over the Legendaries real quick, this is kind of where it was last minute information that Blizzard just released like yesterday or the day before. Essentially, whenever you craft a new Legendary in certain slots, um, the slots that are able to gain a socket in patch 9.1, they will gain one. And it's going to be important because we need to recraft quite a few legendaries. If you're playing on Holy, the Deadliest Coil legendary that was on the chest piece before, you want to recraft that on the cloak. One thing I do want to mention is that you should only recraft your legendary once you actually get a chest piece with a domination socket slot. Um, so for plate users, there are two options. One's off of Guardians, which is the ideal piece um since it's haste mastery and then the other one is off of nerzul which is a haste verse piece slightly worse uh but until you get either of those chests don't worry about recrafting your chest legendary and this goes for all the frost ones as well don't worry about recrafting your you know frost shoulders until you actually get a shoulder piece with a domination socket on it so for unholy it's deadliest coil you want to craft it on the cloak and then for frost you will want to craft cold Tiras, which was previously the shoulder um, on a ring slot um, and Rage of the Frozen Champion, which were previously gloves, also on a ring slot. Um, everything else is kind of fine as is, uh, since those are kind of the two major legendaries that most people will be playing. 
Um, also along the lines of legendaries, the Covenant legendaries, uh, none of them seem good enough to craft for progression, so don't worry about them. Next, I want to cover trinkets. Um, unfortunately, if you don't like the other side, you'll have to spend a little more time in there because IQD still seems like the best unused trinket for Unholy. So make sure that whenever Mythic Plus opens up in Season 2 of Shadowlands, you go and farm yourself another IQD so then you can upgrade it. Um, for passive trinkets, there are quite a few that are very close together, but I recommend going with the Old Warrior Soul, which is a base strength, and then while you're in combat, you gain a bunch of haste over time. So a minute into the fight, it will be fully ramped. Um, and this trinket is just the best kind of like passive, you know, trinket that you can have. Um, and then for your on use, just IQD. Or if you can't get an IQD, the PvP badge is also okay. Um, for Unholy, it's a little bit worse. For Frost, definitely can use that instead. So those are the trinkets. Um, I'm not going to go over every single other trinket. Um, a lot of them are pretty decent. Like, you know, this Mastery Trinket that procs Strength is alright, um, it has a pretty high uptime. But pretty much any Raid Trinket, they're all fairly boring, as long as you're not using any of the ones that deal damage when you press them, uh, those tend to be pretty weak. Next, let's go over how the Domination Sockets work. In Sanctum of Domination, there are going to be certain item slots which have a Domination Socket on them. For plate users, it's going to be the helm, shoulder, chest, wrist, and gloves. Um, so those are the possible items that you can get that have a domination socket. Out of these, only the main ones, the helm, the shoulder, and the chest will have a specific set bonus. So once you um, start using three of a certain kind of domination shards, then you will proc the set bonus. So the Helm has the Unholy set bonus, which is the one that you want to use as a DPS. Um, the Shoulders have... Let me see if I can find it. Um, the Shoulders have the Frost one, and then the Chest has the Blood one. As Unholy DK and Frost DK, you want to use a Helmet, um, absolutely, which will give you the Unholy set bonus. It procs stats and deals damage, it's super useful. And this means that once you start acquiring shards, um, you can see the three unholy ones here are Shard of Zed, Shard of D Ds, and Shard of Oath. Um, shard of Zed is the strongest, um, so if you can get that one, go ahead and do. Um, second strongest is Shard of Ds, uh, and then the third one is... It doesn't give you any DPS, so try not to use that one. Uh, but essentially you want to use at least three of these unholy shards which will then proc the domination set bonus if, when you have the helmet equipped. So it's a little bit confusing but once you start acquiring these it's going to be a, a lot more straightforward. Now the items themselves come from the raid um, and the raid is the only place where you can get items with domination sockets on them. Also keep in mind that, like I said, only the helmet, the shoulders, and the chest have the bonus. If I go like to the wrists, for example, they have the socket slot on them, but they don't actually proc a bonus. So you need to have the helmet equipped and then, you know, two extra items with unholy shards in them to get the set bonus effect. And then the shards themselves you actually get from Corthia. Um, lastly, I wanted to cover this weapon that they introduced, the Jantis. Um, essentially, the way this weapon works is that by default, it's just a high eye level weapon because it drops off of KT, so second to last boss. But then you can actually feed it other weapons. Um, so, you know, if you have a 233, um, actually, that is scaled down, but I think it's 259 eye level. Um, and then you can feed it other weapons and that's going to reduce the amount of secondary stats the weapon has, but it will add a proc effect. Um, as you can see, I have one upgraded here to rank four. Rank five is the maximum, but it's currently bugged on the PTR. So at rank four, it deals physical damage and gets a proc um, that procs main stat. So essentially, you're giving up permanent secondary stats for a proc. From 
what we know right now, it's not worth to upgrade this weapon. On single target, it's going to be barely better to upgrade it to rank 5, and then on AoE, you're losing out on damage. So maybe at some point, you have one that's upgraded, one that's not, um, you know, for a single target weapon, and then an AoE weapon. But once you get this weapon, in the first few weeks, do not upgrade it unless they make specific changes to it. And if they do change it, um, change the tuning, I will post a note about it in the comment section or I'll, you know, ping in my Discord. Um, but as of right now, do not upgrade this weapon if you get it. All right, that should cover everything you need to know about patch 9.1. Um, keep an eye on my Discord. I will post relevant information in there. And also for my patrons and Twitch subs, I will have uh, an exclusive spreadsheet where you can kind of get an idea of what boss mechanics can be cheesed with DKs. Um, and give you some hints on what setup you should be running for each boss. But yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.